All right, y'all, welcome back to Comet Arms Channel. Okay, so today's video, we are doing something that we kind of did similarly before in a different video. So before we did the whole weapons tier list with all the weapons that I've used inside the military. So today we're doing a camouflage tier list. Now, I have some pretty strong opinions on camouflage, just being, one, being infantry, and then two, being, you know, in, the, in a recon element. I know the importance of camouflage, and I know how weird it is to try and operate when your camouflage doesn't actually match your environment. So we've seen a bunch of different camouflage out there. You guys will probably recognize a lot of the camouflage in this video. So we have about 12, maybe 12, 13. So a lot of US camouflage patterns because I mean the US has changed their camouflage patterns a bunch in recent history. And of course we have all these different branches using a bunch of different camouflage. And then we have some camouflage patterns from other countries. So yeah, you guys might recognize some of these. Um, some of them are pretty uh, popular, and then some are just kind of like, they were made popular through video games or, you know, maybe like movies or something. So yeah, hopefully you guys can uh, appreciate this. But again, I have some pretty strong opinions on camouflage. That's why I like doing these tier list videos because it sort of allows you guys to get to my mind about why I like certain things and why I dislike other things. So yeah, it should be fun. Let's get into it. All right, so here we have all of them. So I'll just switch to that. Okay, so we have, let's see. Yeah, so it is 13. All right, so yeah, you can see on the left, we have a bunch of US camouflage patterns. And on the right, we have a bunch of different camouflage patterns from all over. So I didn't do anything crazy as far as like Arctic camouflage, because that's very nuanced. This is more of like a woodland or general purpose camouflage sort of thing so i mean I'm, I'm more than willing to do a part two for this if you guys wanted to do any like specialty camouflage like arctic and stuff that'd be kind of cool so yeah i guess we'll just go down this list and yeah so we start with the chocolate chip i mean you'll hear this get called a few different things like the six color desert uh, but more than likely it's going to be referred to as the chocolate chip camouflage so this was the u.s camouflage for like the Gulf War as era, like Desert Storm. Um, and I'm not sure, possibly early Iraq, but I think by the time Iraq was kicking off, they had the UCP. So yeah, the chocolate chip. Again, this is, it's pretty iconic because you see it in a bunch of different movies and everything. However, as a camouflage pattern, it's not really that great. It's kind of like if a six-year-old was, you know, trying to design camouflage, this is what they would use. They would add these little rocks in here and they would go with a very general camouflage pattern. So it's okay, it does what it, what it does and does what it's supposed to, but not that well. When you actually see people wearing it, it's okay, but it's not that great. So we'll put this at a, at a low, uh, we'll put it at a low B right now. So that's pretty generic camouflage. Works okay, not nearly as good as it could be. Um, all right. <laughs> The UCP, so if you guys have seen the meme of the dude wearing UCP and he's laying on his like grandma's couch trying to blend in, that's pretty much the summary of this camouflage. So I'm going to instantly throw this at an F tier. So this literally does not work like anywhere, unless you're like in a really rocky environment like a mountain or something like that. It's not going to work very well, uh, especially when it gets faded. It's like almost white, it's like a very light gray. So I don't know who like sold this to the army, but that dude must be the best salesman ever because that thing does not work. Okay, so yeah, UCP, easy, easy F tier. So we have a pretty strong basis to start off on already. All right, so the M81 Woodland. This is very iconic. And some units actually still use this today. Um, it's not as common. I think Marsoc still uses the M81 or maybe like a variant of it, but it's a very effective camouflage. It works very well. I think it was first implemented during the Vietnam War. Um, but yeah, this thing, uh, I wanna throw it at S tier. Uh, you know what, I'm throwing it at S tier. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. M81 is a very solid camouflage pattern. It does what it's supposed to do. It's very simple and it's just, it's absolutely iconic. The, the chocolate chip is pretty iconic, but geez, that M81 is just legendary. So I'm, I feel comfortable throwing that at, at an S tier. I think most people will generally agree. Okay, so now we're moving on to the multicam. So this is relatively new. I think this was adopted in like 2004 or something. Um, well, not, not really so much adopted. 
you can see the army using this a bunch. You can see the Air Force using this pattern as well, but more than likely it's going to be the OCP variant, which is just slightly different. Doesn't necessarily have like the vertical patterns like the multicam has, but the multicam is very solid. And this is what most people will be utilizing. Um, I've, I've seen a bunch of different countries utilizing multicam, but it's a very awesome camouflage pattern. So I'm going to throw this at, an high, at a high uh, A tier. It's just awesome, it works very well. It's just, I mean, it's overall it's awesome. It's very versatile, it works, it does what it's supposed to do, and it looks generally okay. So I feel comfortable putting that in A tier. It's a solid camouflage pattern. All right, so now we're moving into the Marine Corps pattern. So the Marine Corps adopted the MARPATs um, it must have been in the 90s, I think, 90s or early 2000s. So you have the Marpat woodland and then you have the desert. Personally, I'm a fan of the woodland, but the desert does its job pretty well. So desert is, it's a pretty solid camouflage pattern, I gotta say. However, when it gets faded, it gets very, very light. So I think it could be a little bit darker, but for what it is, it does a pretty pretty good job. So before the Marine Corps was adopting the Marpats, they had the chocolate chip and they also had the M81. Um, they might have actually had something else, maybe the three color. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, the Marpat is a pretty solid camouflage pattern. I'm going to throw the desert at an A um, just because it is, it is good. It works in what it's supposed to do. It works pretty well in the deserts. However, it does get faded. And then when it does get faded, it's pretty light, it's pretty easy to spot, but when you have the standard camouflage, it, it works very well. So we'll put that in A. And then the woodlands, um, I don't know, these are very iconic. These, I think were like one of the, this and the UCP were like some of the first digital pattern camouflage, uh, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that, so feel free to fact check me. But this is when, yeah, like the whole digital pattern was really getting popular. And I just remember as a kid, it looked very cool. So I'm going to throw the woodland at an A tier as well, but just slightly higher than the desert, just because I think the woodlands are generally more comfortable. And I think they do work a little bit better than the deserts uh, as far as like fading and everything. All right, so for my finished fans out there, we have the MO5, or I don't know how you guys would pronounce it, M05, MO5, but yeah. Uh, the finished camouflage pattern. I gotta say, this is like an S tier. So this is the Marine Corps Marpat, but just made slightly better. I've seen it work, uh, you know, in videos. There's a bunch of videos out there that test the effectiveness of a bunch of these camouflage patterns. And yeah, that, that finished camouflage pattern works very, very well. Now, I think some of y'all were telling me that they took a bunch of pictures of like finish woods and stuff like that and then they basically rendered it into a camouflage pattern super interesting uh, i'm sure there was a lot more research that went into <laughs> that than the ucp because i don't know i don't know how some countries can adopt this awesome camouflage and then you have the u.s just adopting this freaking trash so yeah the, the finish mo5 i'm not trying to you know suck up to all my finnish fans out there I do believe that is a very solid camouflage pattern. It works very, very well. So yeah, it's a good one. It's a little bit better than the Marpats. I think the Marpat, again, is just slightly too fluorescent, if that makes any sense. It sticks out slightly uh, if you're not in like very shaded areas. All right, so now we're going to the German uh, Flecktarn. I'm not, again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but this is a decent camouflage pattern. For some reason, this works very well too. Uh, it looks pretty cool, and I think I'm gonna have to throw it at an A. So it does, it works very well. It looks pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna put it at an A tier because it does what it's supposed to. It looks pretty good, and it seems like it works pretty well. However, I don't know how effective it is in a bunch of different environments. It seems like it works pretty well. Uh, however, I just don't think it looks as cool as like the M81 or the M05. So that's just my opinion. But if you're if you're in like the German uh, armed forces or whatever the German army, let me know how you think about the Flecktarn camouflage. I'm not sure if you guys have adopted any other camouflage because I know you had the Flecktarn in a bunch of different varieties um, since like way back. But I think this is the most recent. I'm not sure the actual. Uh, designation for this specific pattern but it does look very well not sure if you guys are trying to adopt anything new but I think it works pretty well for what it is 
Okay, the UK's MTP. Uh, I think that's multi-terrain pattern, if I'm correct. This is like multicam, but better. So I used to think that the multicam, or I used to think that the UK wore multicam until I actually saw the UK standing next to, um, or someone in the British Army standing, standing next to someone who is wearing multicam. And I gotta say, this camouflage pattern just nails it. It looks it looks very, very solid. It's not as complicated and messy as a multicam, because I think the multicam is just trying a little bit too hard, honestly. Um, it, it works pretty well, but this one, it just, I don't know, it just blends things like slightly better. So very, very awesome camouflage pattern. It looks very cool. I think it looks much better than the multicam, but that's just my opinion. Uh, awesome camouflage pattern. So you guys did a very good job with adopting that one. Okay, the UK's DPM, um, disruptive pattern, I don't know. This is the UK's old camouflage, and this is the desert, the desert variant. I think there's like a desert and a woodland variant, but this camouflage honestly does not work that well. I think it's a little bit worse than the chocolate chip. So I think I'm gonna have to throw that at a C. Now I know a lot of my old school uh, you know, British Army, Royal Marine Commandos. I, I, you guys might be a little bit upset that I'm putting it at a C, but I don't actually think it works that great, and I don't think it looks that great either. Uh, it kind of just looks like a child took a bunch of brown paints and just like made a bunch of marks on a, a tan cloth, but I don't know. That's just me. I don't think it looks that great. You guys might have some pretty strong opinions. That might be like your M81 for for us in the US, but I don't know. I don't think it looks that great or works that great, but let me know how you guys think about that camouflage down in the comment section. Of course, you guys had some very strong opinions on the gun tier list, and that's totally fine. This is definitely all based off of my experience, and I haven't ever worn this. Uh, I've seen the I've seen the, MD, the MCP in real life. I've never really seen the DPM. Um, but I know how effective the MTP is as opposed to the DPM, so I'll just leave it at that. All right, now we have the Swedish M90. Now, this is an interesting camouflage. Uh, it does what a lot of other camouflage patterns don't really do. It sort of makes it very, very simple. It's kind of got like a weird pattern to it, almost like it's digital, but it, it's not really. But the overall effectiveness is not really that great. I think I'm gonna have to throw this at like a low B. Now it looks looks very, very cool, I gotta say that. It looks really sick. Um, however, it doesn't work that well. It's just a little bit too like neon and fluorescent. And I know Sweden is a beautiful country and the foliage is probably all lush and green. So it might work in some areas, but from what I've seen, it doesn't really work too well in most areas, especially when you leave like all the lush greenery and stuff. So looks very cool, but I don't think it works that great. So if you guys have any experience with that camouflage as opposed to any of these other camouflage patterns, let me know how it works. But again, I'm not sure. I don't think it, it matches that well. Now, I will give this caveat. I am colorblind. <laughs> so you guys are probably all just uh, exiting the video right now. But I am colorblind. I'm red, green colorblind. But I can see camouflage pretty well. I think I see it. So actually, what they say with colorblind people is they can distinguish camouflage uh, better than other people can, as opposed to its normal surroundings, because colorblind people will see an absence of what's supposed to be a color, you know, in the camouflage pattern. So if someone's wearing like this Marpad in, you know, the, the perfect environment, I might see a little bit of distinction just based off of how this light is reflecting towards my eyes than a normal person's eyes. So. I don't know, some people say that colorblind people can distinguish camouflage a little bit better. Not sure if it's true, but <laughs> I'll give that caveat. So hopefully you guys aren't too upset and hopefully it doesn't ruin my credibility so much. All right, the splinter camouflage. Um, I think this was used by the Germans in World War II. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but this camouflage is very, very cool. Um, it does work. It does work pretty well but not as well as these. However, it is very, very cool. So I'm gonna throw it at a high A. Uh, it's a very, very cool camouflage pattern. You've seen, or at least I've seen a bunch of like companies 
recently that I'll use this camouflage in just normal clothing just because it looks cool. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much the, the reason why I'm putting out a high A. It works pretty well, looks very, very cool, has an interesting legacy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Again, I'm pretty biased when it comes to the, the coolness of camouflage. M81 is going to be an S tier pretty much all the time. And I can appreciate how well these camouflage patterns work. But yeah, the splinter looks cool. Doesn't work as well as the others. All right, the Rhodesian brush stroke. This is a very interesting camouflage. Doesn't really, as far as I'm tracking, or as, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't have a whole lot of use or didn't get a whole lot of use. And it just, this is just the camouflage that you would expect to see on a Hawaiian shirt. And that's pretty much it. So pretty iconic not that great so i'm gonna have to throw this at a high c honestly um, and the reason for that again it doesn't look that great it has a really cool and interesting history and interesting little legacy but yeah it's it's just not that great it might work a little bit better in certain environments like uh, i don't know maybe like in australia new zealand um, maybe even like South Africa or something like that. It might work a little bit better when you have some of the drier environments. So yeah, I'll throw that out at B. I think it will work in its environment relatively well, but when you see it up close, it's very obvious that it's a weird camouflage pattern. I don't know why, it just repeats itself a little bit too much, I think, but it's pretty easy to distinguish, pretty easy to see, but I guess it would work pretty well in its, in its environment. All right, <laughs> well, that's pretty much it. I mean, I love seeing the UCP down here though. I really wish we had like a trash can. Actually, hold on. All right, you guys ready for this? There we go. That's where it belongs. <laughs> All that Photoshop just for that little. I mean, that goes to show how much I dislike that pattern. So I hope you guys can appreciate that little Photoshop job there. All right, but yeah, overall everything works relatively well. Uh, you can imagine a lot of these camouflage are going to be built on very specific environments, um, especially just based off of the, the people that it's actually, or the people that are actually going to be wearing it. You know, if they're not really going to be going to all these different countries or they're not really expected to react in all these different countries, they're not going to need a camouflage that's really that versatile. They just want a camouflage that works in that specific area. So maybe that was the case with like the Rhodesian brushstroke and possibly the M90, but uh yeah, I'm not sure this this UK DPM. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Again, you guys might have some pretty strong opinions on it, but yeah, I don't think it looks it looks too hot. So yeah, that's that's where it's at. It's the M81, the M05, and the MTP. Very very solid camouflage patterns. I gotta say that. Um, so yeah, the Marine Corps Marpat works pretty well. The uh, the multicam is good. The Flectarn, and then the uh, splinter camouflage. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much how it stands. So let me know what you guys think about this. Again, I know you guys are going to be pretty passionate about certain camouflage patterns, just based off of what you might've worn, what your, your parents, your brothers, your sisters might've worn whenever they were in the service. You might have a pretty iconic view of one of these camouflage patterns. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the, in the comments section. And of course, I'm always down to do a part two on like specialty camouflage patterns. I think that'd be pretty cool. But again, I don't have as much experience or exposure to those camouflage patterns just because they're sort of like very niche and they didn't really get that much circulation. But I think it'd be cool regardless. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section. If you guys like this video, feel free to hit the thumbs up. I think it was pretty cool. And I'm pretty proud of this, uh, <laughs> this Photoshop job right here. Uh, yeah, that, that pattern should have been thrown out like two decades ago, I gotta say. It was uh, never, never a good camouflage pattern. But uh, yeah, we're moved, we moved past it now, so we're good. We got the multicam at least. So, all right, yeah, let me know what you guys think. This is a pretty fun video, relatively chill. And of course, I love getting in Photoshop and show you guys my awesome Photoshop skills. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. <laughs> but that is it for this one. So I will see you all in the next one.